All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining me today. It's time for another Stutter and Craig's Mount Rushmore. Top four of my favorite things. Uh, if you guys like these lists, please do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up button. Most importantly, subscribe. But guess what? These are actually, uh, people like them, which is great. And I actually like doing them a lot. So uh, I think, I'm, I, like I said, I like to do these probably two or three times a week. So uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. And let me know when you watch these videos. When, you, when are you on YouTube? Because I'm trying to figure out when to release them. In the morning? In the afternoon? In the evening? I think this one's going to go up around midday, and uh, we'll see how it goes. But either way, uh, I know you, a lot of you guys are waiting on the WWF uh, Top Heels video. That's going to be coming early next week, so make sure you guys subscribe for that. But today we're going to talk about something very near and dear to my heart, which is the classic arcade game scene, specifically fighting games. Man, oh man. You, look, you guys know I love myself some classic fighting games. Honestly, today, I can't even keep up with, with what's going on. I feel like such an old man watching uh, modern fighting games with, with all sorts of breaks and, and focus moves and, and, you know, I don't know, man. Like, it, there's just a lot going on and there's no way I could compete in any sort of modern fighting game. They're just, I was pretty good at Mortal Kombat 9, but it was a very basic game to play. Um, and I feel at times that that things have gotten too advanced. And I know I sound, sound like a really old man right now. It's because I am an older man right now. I'm not in the arcades. I'm not playing games every day. So uh, there is now an intimidation factor as far as getting attached to the modern fighting game. I don't even know. I, like, I, I stopped playing Street Fighter V, and I love Street Fighter. You guys know that. Uh, I played that for like a week. But then again, I get apparently that got a lot better over time. So here's my list of classic arcade game uh, fighting games from the 90s, um, which is kind of a specific list, but you know what? It's mine, so whatever. Uh, the Mount Rushmore. Now, all these games, I want to get, I want to take you back to a uh, different time where when, where when you wanted to play the best of the best, you had to walk into an arcade. You had to go to your mall, and inside your mall, there was an arcade, like a tilt or something like that. That's what it was called where I was at, a tilt. Uh, which was apparently a pretty big franchise at some point, but it was usually in the food court and you could hear from the food court all the attract sounds happening from inside the arcade pulling you in. That was there doing, they were attracting you, pulling you in slowly, just sucking you in, trying to take those quarters one at a time, making money for that arcade operator. Um, and all these games, I'll tell you, I don't even know how much time I spent playing these games. And a lot of these games actually, um, well, one of the games on the list, I, I don't know if I spent a single dime on because at a time I actually worked in an arcade called GameWorks, which GameWorks was a, was a, um, a giant arcade uh, in the late 90s run by Sega and I had unlimited gameplay, baby. So look, a lot of, a lot of the games here, I spent a lot of time on. And some, actually, I just I spent a lot of quarters on it growing up, and they were very formative to me. So let's get into these. Every single one of these, I promise you, you could probably point out just from their track sound, including this one right here. Oh, baby, you knew it as soon as it hit. As soon as it hit, let's go. Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! -hoo -hoo -hoo! Killer instinct, baby. Listen, if this does not get you hyped, to get in and get going with it at its own CD, Killer Cuts. This was the epitome of what the arcade was. Shut up, pay attention, and listen because your mind is about to get blown. Oh my God. This is a time of optimism, a time where you could get together with your friends or somebody random down the street, see them doing something amazing on an arcade game that you've never seen before. Ultra combos, are you kidding me? You wanna talk about the ultimate attract sound, that was it. Ultra combo! This game came in after Mortal Kombat, after Street Fighter, but it was attached to Nintendo. And this was a time, once again, 3D like modeling coming in. Oh my God, it was legit and awesome. And you saw something like this, this pulled you in. This pulled you in right here. This is a Glacius playthrough and when this game came home to the Super Nintendo, there was a very distinct difference between the arcade and the Super Nintendo version, but the Super Nintendo version was close enough. So you played it, it was awesome. So when this game became available much years later uh, in, in, our, in arcade version, 
uh, became available to, to your average person, man, that was a big deal. Now you can buy it like on Arcade 1-Up, I think. I think you can buy this game on Arcade 1-Up. or There's all sorts of ways you can buy it on Xbox Live and stuff. But man, this game is awesome. It had the scaling textures, that are the scaling levels. And notice as he moves back, the level scales back. This is one of the few levels on this. Uh, I think there's two or three levels on this that, uh, that actually uh, does this. But fighting games didn't do this very often. I think like Art of Fighting did this, but Street Fighter kept everyone in a, in a nice contained environment. Mortal Kombat kept you in a nice contained environment. Not so with, uh, with Killer Instinct. The further you went back, the further your, your, your characters went, the smaller they got. It was called scaling. I remember specifically on this bridge, fighting with Jago and going back to, from putting one guy on one side of the screen, one guy on the other side of the screen, and doing his kick all the way across the screen. Oh yeah, because that's awesome. I love it. Man, can we talk about how cool these cutscenes were right here? Jeez, that's awesome. Supreme victory. And of course the announcer. Come on, get out of here. This level in particular though, before we move on, Orchid with her pointy boobs. Uh, I love this level and the, the idea that anytime you can see your fight happening in the background, which as the screen rotates, as the level rotates, you see a screen behind you and it actually has your fight being broadcast I thought that was just amazing. Look, I could talk about, I could talk about Killer Instinct all day. Oh, oh, there it is over on the right side. I guess, I guess maybe you don't see it in the background. I, I guess it'll, it'll just kind of on the right side of the screen behind me on the, on it. but either way, I just remember thinking that was totally amazing. And uh, I think Killer Instinct still to this day, look, some people say it's broken. I say it's incredibly fun. If, if you don't know how to break it, then it still works just fine. So there you go. There's number four on my list of the top, top 90s arcade fighting games. Man, I love that. It's so good, Killer Instinct, so good. Once again, I wanna remind you to put your list down below in the comments and uh, tell me a little bit about why you chose each one. Not just the game title, but tell me what your emotional attachment is. That's what I love doing, talking about these. Are you ready for number three on my Mount Rushmore of 90s fighting games? Oh baby, let's go. Let's go! Little MVC2! You know a little MVC2 is where it's at. Look, look at the entire, look at the character selection on this. It's ridiculous. There's characters that I had never heard of that I still have no idea where they came from. But I'll tell you what, who was your three characters? I'll tell you who mine were. And this is a totally crazy backwards ass. Oh, there, there was two, I had two teams, right? Depending on, on, on uh, how I wanted to play. If I wanted to play for points to get the high score, I chose uh, Sentinel. Uh, Sentinel, uh, Cable, and Juggernaut. Sentinel, Cable, and Juggernaut. That was my high score team to get the high score in the game. If I, wanted, if I was actually competing, it was Cable, Tronbon, and then Mingo, the Cactus. Who played on that? I don't know, and that was the beautiful thing about this. Now, once again, I know that when it comes to uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, when people talk about broken games, the, 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 high, the, the super competitive scene of this game is stupid. Like the idea of like, you make one mistake and the game is done. You're juggled till the end of the level. I remember watching this at Evo and being like, what am I watching? Like this is insane. I remember being in the room watching Evo uh, and Marvel vs. Capcom 2 in particular and being like, I don't even know what's happening. Like who is Spiral? I don't, I have no idea who Spiral is, but this insane cast of characters uh, makes this game so, so fun. And I love that Ruby Hart is in it, and, and she's teaming up with Cammy and Spiral, and, and Ryu is with Cyclops. Like, what, what, what is happening here? I don't even know. And of course, the soundtrack on this game is one of those things that is, is widely talked about when it comes to uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, New Age of Heroes. Um, and, and rightfully so. It's like a smooth jazz. Hey, baby, let's go. It's like this... But it, it, it just kind of works. If everything was like, don't, 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 it wouldn't be as fun. So, uh, AVC2, man, what, what a great, what a great game. And, and think about, like, the business model of this game. When this game was released in the arcade, all the games, the, the, the character select screen was available, uh, only had a certain number of characters available, and it was a team effort, team effort to unlock all the characters because certain characters will unlock after a certain number of credits were put in the machine. Did you know that? Did you remember that? I remember that because I remember opening up the arcade machine at GameWorks and hitting the credits so everyone would be unlocked 
And it was like 90,000 credits or something. It was stupid. I, I would love to see if I can find that online. But uh, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, what a fun game. And, the, and the, obviously the, the combos of the, uh, the Ultra, the um, super moves and stuff, combining everything in. Uh, just a really fun game. And isn't that what you really want? You just want fun. Man. <laughs> then, of course, came out on the Dreamcast, and the Dreamcast was great, too. All right. So there you go. There's, there's my, uh, my number three on my list. God, it did, just watching this makes me smile. I love, I love this. All right. Number two on my list. Once again, I'm just going to let you listen to this, and, and you, you tell me before you even know. You tell me. You tell me before I even show it to you. Here we go. Boom! You knew it as soon as I hit it. Woo! Little MK2. Look, Mortal Kombat 1 was legit, but MK2 was where all the cool kids were. Think about, once again, stepping back in time and what Mortal Kombat 2... This was 1993? Are you kidding? 1993? What? Are you kidding me? We're all so old. But this game still holds up. It still plays at a high level, and it's still ridiculously fun. Okay, once again, take a step back. Put yourself in the shoes of a kid going to an arcade game. The internet, the, an arcade, the internet does not exist. You see all this stuff flying on in the background. The intrigue behind Mortal Kombat 2 is what made Mortal Kombat 2 and Mortal Kombat so amazing. Being able to knock your opponent into, into uh, the, 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 the goo, the acid, and watching them pop up. Does the game play extremely basic? Yes, but it's fun. And the announcer the entire time. Oh my gosh, this gets you excited. It gets you in the game, man. And yeah, it's just jumping and punching, and everybody has the same moves except for their super moves, or except for their specials. We knock him in, knock him in, knock him in. Yeah! Oh, Mom. Flawless victory. Fatality. Oh, God. That fatality, when it hits, when it hits and it goes... It's like, man, shit just happened. But the stage fatalities here, my lord, how fun is that? That is so exciting. And the, the fact that every character has like two or three fatalities, and, it, and it's self-aware too. Liu Kang turns into a, a Mortal Kombat arcade game or drops down on you and also turns into a dragon. And Jax, has, this is before Jax has metal arms. This is the first time you see Jax. Like, how cool. I remember thinking about those, these, speaking of these like dragons flying in the background, they kind of looked like those things in Apex Legends that you shoot. Anyways, um, I remember thinking like, there's gotta be something attached to these guys. Hit them up in the sky. Yeah! Hold down, and what happens? My goal is about you get an ad! <laughs> oh my god. You got, you better pay with the blue apron dollars. To watch oh he didn't hold down you got to hit him up you need to hold down and then then the guy slowly comes down like with those tiny little easter eggs are what makes this game so amazingly fun oh my god uh what is your i'll tell you the music in this game is awesome let me show you my favorite music real quick oh hold on it's the forest is outstanding you got all the you got smoke and, and jade in the background popping their heads out this is my favorite music here the armory just it, it, this to me screams Mortal Kombat. Well, as we watch Liu Kang just get decimated by the by, by oh my God, put him in a circle. All right, here we go. Listen to this music real quick. Here we go. Oh my God, it's so good. And with all with all the uh, weapons in the background. In, in the physical background, and you notice in, the, in the, the music, if you were to look for the Armory Mortal Kombat 2 music in the background, this guy, guy's like screaming, oh, 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 man, let him know, rip off them arms, oh my god, Mortal Kombat 2, how fun. Once again, one reoccurring theme to all these, they're just fun. Alright, here we go, my numero uno game on uh, of 90s arcade fighting games, look, you know what there's ever any doubt, come on, come on. Come on! It wasn't a matter of if this was gonna be Street Fighter 2. It was just a matter of which one, and for me, it was Super, super Turbo. Some of you may be surprised that I didn't put Third Strike on this, because Third Strike, for me, it, I started playing, it came out in 99, I started playing it much later. Uh, 
while it did come out in 99, it didn't really catch till many years later. But Super Turbo to me, I, I actually, if you would have talked to me in the 90s, I would have said Hyper Fighting was my favorite. But Super Turbo in particular, I think, is is the best of, of the original Street Fighter 2. Oh. Ooh, that's great stuff. <laughs> hey, when, when you went to the arcade, when you went to the arcade and you heard those annoying elephants in Street Fighter 2 going brruh, brruh, from the attract sound, like you are talking about an attract sound, man. It was great stuff. But building on all of all the wonderful things from uh, the first Street Fighter games um, is, is, is what I truly love. Uh, was it weird that they constantly released? I mean, look, Capcom made a living. Like just, just made, built an entire empire off re-releasing the same game over and over again with tiny little updates. But they wouldn't have done it if there wasn't a demand for it. And think about how much this game changed over the course from the original Street Fighter 2 to Super Turbo, right? They added new characters. The game sped up. New char uh, the characters had received more variation. Uh, Ryu and Ken pretty much turned into entirely different characters. They weren't just palette swaps. Um, Super fun. I, I mean, this game, I really spent a lot of time um, on the Super Nintendo. and I, But I do remember literally the first time I saw Super Turbo. I saw it in a movie theater. It was, in, uh, it was a movie theater, which is now a church. But I remember seeing this game for the first time and seeing the little bar on the bottom of the screen, this, this thing down here. And I didn't understand what was happening with it. Because I, my, my thought, the way I played the game, I played with the fierce punches and the fierce kicks. And I didn't have the nuance of, of the, the combo system, right? So the, the, the super meter would never fill up for me. Like, I would never get a chance to, for it to fill up. I didn't understand how it worked. Uh, but I remember seeing a super for the first time. I think it was Ryu throwing a fireball and it being hit and, and getting that big, uh, the big burst of energy at the end after you connect with it. I remember thinking that was so great, so cool. Um, but my love for this game truly didn't come until later, until after, after uh, I played it at home and uh, much later. Oh man, missed him. Anyways, nowadays you get like this full cutscene and stuff, but for me, Super Turbo is such a great game and it's like, it's still competitively played today and I'm still pretty good at it. Who's your character? I used to play as Ryu, now I play as Chun-Li my chun can probably beat you any day of the week. All right, so there you go. There's my list of the uh, the Mount Rushmore, my top four 90s fighting games. I would love to hear your list. This video went kind of long, a little long, longer than I expected, but uh, please pop them down in the comments below. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and hit the thumbs up button. I, I plan on doing two to three of these a week, probably Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. These are fun to do. I like doing it. And let me know what, you, what you'd like for me to do a Mount Rushmore on down below in the comments. Once again, comments are great. They let YouTube know that you're watching it. So anyways, guys, appreciate you guys popping in. We'll see you guys next time, probably Monday. And once again, let me know when you guys are watching these videos and when a premiere would work best for you. you guys, have a great day. We'll see you guys later. Ah, uh, bye-bye.